Hello, and welcome to another very special episode of ClutchCast. I'm Matt Schroyer, and I'm here with my good friend and project car, the BMW Z3 Roadster. Right now, we're in the midst of an entire coolant system refresh, which should be done about every 10 years, or approximately 100,000 miles. Uh, and that process includes removing the intake manifold, which I did in a previous episode. So if you're playing the game at home, go ahead and go back and watch that video about to how to remove the intake manifold, and that'll take you right up to this point, where I get down to actually replacing the coolant lines and other coolant components. So right now the intake manifold is off and all the fiddly bits that go with it, exposing some of the brittle plastic pipes below, that uh, are some of the most uh, fragile parts of the coolant system and one of the biggest reasons why you do this in the first place. So I'm gonna get to it and replace those pipes. Okay, time for a quick update. Upper pipe, lower pipe are out, uh, but uh, not uh, not in one piece, unfortunately. This is the upper pipe. As you see, it has uh, broken off, um, and here's part of that end that actually goes into the uh, the block. Uh, this, from what I understand, is, is not that uncommon. Um, there's actually a fair bit stuck inside, as you can see. Let's see focus a little bit you can see a little bit of the uh, the rubber o-ring right here that's a little bit of the rubber o-ring uh, stuck inside with a part of the nipple and uh, that is going to be a pain in the butt to get out but uh, it's got to come out anyway I'm just going to take some time and do it right um, if you don't do that you're not going to have a clean surface here so not only do you have to take the remainder of the pipe out you actually have to clean this pretty thoroughly to make sure that you have a good seal and you don't have any leaks. Uh, the other pipe, this is where the other pipe came from. If I can focus again. Uh, messy pipe, clean pipe. It looks like, uh, looks like it's pretty clean. Um, I'm going to clean it up a little bit more beyond this. But uh, as you can see, not too bad this one. Uh, the bottom one much cleaner than the top one. Um, a trick in removing the bottom one here is, as you may have seen in the video, rotate. Rotate as much as you can. Um, wiggle, rotate some more, blast it with some uh, penetrant. Um, it seems that I have better luck the, with uh, the Croil penetrant than I have with anything else. I do have a can of WD-40 that I alternate with sometime, uh, so-called uh, penetrant WD-40. Um, which is not the original regular WD-40, doesn't seem to work as well. Croil seems to be uh, much more, uh, much thinner. Can get into the crevices, cracks, uh, tolerances much, uh, much easier. So definitely the Croil is what I'm having better luck with. That and always rotating and wiggling the pipe. I took the bottom pipe out first. That seemed to be the easiest thing to do. And then the remainder of the top pipe here. Uh, so let's go back really quick and show you what those pipes looked like. 
uh, again, um, broke off, which is which is fairly common. But I want you to take special note of something. This pipe is uh, maybe original to the car, may not. But uh, this is a big reason why you do that. You see that brown color? That brown kind of film is actually the pipe uh, changing its chemical composition a bit due to the heat cycles. And you can see, if you look at this cross-section, most of it is still the original plastic. Of course, on the outside, outside it looks perfectly normal. If you look at that cross-section, you can begin to see that the innermost layer is starting to turn that uh, sort of peanut butter brown color. And uh, people who've had their pipes on longer or whose pipes have gone under uh, more stress, sometimes observe that the whole pipe, inside and out, is that peanut butter color, and it just sort of breaks off. Um, I don't know which is easier to remove, a peanut butter pipe or uh, one like this, but what I do know is that you do have to get you know all of it out. Here's part of it. Try to reconstruct it so that you get a better idea of what's left inside. You can see a lot of bits, and here's some of that sort of peanut butter sort of film from the inside of the, the topmost pipe. The bottom pipe seemed to be in much better condition. It does seem to have some sort of decomposition, this lower pipe. Um, not all of the nipple came out of the head. Um, some pieces are still down here, but I'm pretty sure this is all good and accounted for. Again, I will have to clean the orifice uh, where this fit in. So, um, But now the immediate goal is to uh, remove the rest of this uh, topmost pipe. So there I go. All right, so very important update in the coolant system restoration project. Uh, that nipple that's stuck in the head is uh, pretty tightly in there, and uh, it's going to take something special to go ahead and get that out. Luckily, I heard a tip that I'm going to relay to you, and I'm going to try it right now. And the tip is basically this. You're going to take a three-quarter inch tap, and you're going to tap the nipple. What that's going to allow you to do is thread a bolt in it, which I have right here. This is a three-quarter inch bolt, a thread pitch of uh, ten threads per inch. And what this is allows you to do is you thread it into the nipple, and uh, you go ahead and use that for extra leverage to go ahead and wiggle that out. Something else that's going to help this process along is a 13 millimeter Craftsman socket. You see it has the uh, star shape on the socket and not your normal hex. That's because it has to fit the uh, square shank of this uh, of this tap right here. So it's a little bit difficult to do with the hex, but you can do it with a 13 millimeter Craftsman star socket. So that's basically it. I'm going to get down to it. All right, so after working with that uh, three quarter inch tap, you can start to see a thread forming, get a little bit closer, right where we need it. It looks a little bit messy right now. Um, might be a good idea to just clean that up just a little bit and uh, see if I can thread a, a three-quarter inch bolt through there and maybe, you know, get some leverage on this, maybe be able to twist it out. Let's give it a try. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, final results from using the three-quarter inch uh, tap. 
a three quarter inch bolt. This is three inches long. Thread pitch of uh, ten threads per inch, I believe, is the uh, exact specifications for this. And you can see uh, this is really the result that uh, that I wanted here. You can see a bit of the uh, the nipple, the end of that uh, coolant pipe, that plastic coolant pipe is firmly seated on the bolts. Then you apply a little bit of leverage at the uh, at the nut here and uh, you shouldn't need too much. Remember this is an aluminum head you could damage it if you apply too much force and you shouldn't need to. The idea is to just wiggle a little bit. If you wiggle that a little bit and apply a whole bunch of penetrant such as Croil or in a pinch maybe WD-40 you can wiggle this out. Uh, it's important to take stock of all the components, make sure you have every little bit. This was another little bit of that plastic nipple from the uh, the coolant pipe that, uh, that broke off in there. I had to extract this uh, with a, uh, a tool here, a hook, just to uh, get it out of the, the head. And you can see the two uh, rubber gaskets, those came out. So that's all the pieces here. Worked pretty well. This trick with the three quarter inch tap worked pretty well. Um, you do have to lube it up a fair bit before you try to uh, tap the uh, interior of that nipple, but it seems to be the correct size. If I were to do this all over again, uh, what I would probably do is actually, uh, this is this is the end, you can see where it broke off, you can see the condition of the pipe here. Uh, this flange, I guess you'd call it, I would cut this flange off very carefully, making sure not to actually cut into the head, and then remove that piece. And what that would let you do is actually take this pipe and rotate it, right? So if you can rotate it, and then apply some, some leverage this way and keep rotating and keep applying penetrant. This could potentially come out of the head in one piece. So it really restricts your movement having this tab on here. The other pipe came off with not much difficulty. The other plastic t uh, pipe came out with not much difficulty because I could rotate it about a couple axes. And uh, that, seemed to, um, that seemed to make a big difference. But there is a way. It just takes patience. It takes time, a lot of penetrant, waiting, and actually not a whole lot of force. It's not about the amount of force you apply, it's how you apply it. Good news in the garage. Uh, we were making progress on the uh, coolant pipes. As you can see, both the uh, top and bottom plastic coolant pl pipes are installed. Uh, you can see the uh, knock sensors are installed again. Um, you do have to be pretty careful about how you put this thing back together because you got to make sure the plastic pipe snakes under this engine harness, wiring harness here, and you got to make sure that your wires are on the right side of whatever. But uh, that seems to be done. Um, we'll probably test this later to make sure that the connections are good. These actually 
these plastic pipes did not go in with a lot of effort, which leads uh, me to wonder if they're in snug enough. So, uh, yeah, we're going to test this later to see if it's actually a good connection. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and move on to uh, another potentially difficult part, and that's over here where all those water uh, coolant hoses go into the uh, heater system for the car. So there's three hoses uh, as part of the system that all need to be replaced. This is the, uh, the valve here for uh, the... Uh, the heating system in the car, and um, so that's going to be replaced. Uh, this pipe that, or this uh, this coolant hose that goes from the plastic heater pipe, uh, that needs to be replaced. And uh, the one that's probably going to cause a lot of difficulty is the one here from the uh, coolant reservoir. As you can see, it comes down here and actually comes around the side and snakes back up to the back side of the valve here. I'm hoping not to have to remove this valve, but I might have to. We'll see if we can't get some extensions underneath here and uh, take care of that. Anyway, so uh, onward we go. Okay, time for another quick status update. Um, I've done pretty much all I can do here for now. I have to order some more parts. Um, it did turn out to actually service the coolant lines here that uh, go to the heater core and the water valve. You do indeed have to pop out the water valve. Here it is. Um, wasn't wasn't too hard to do. Uh, it's just held together with some uh, some uh, rubber. Here, so you just kind of pop it out. Uh, there is a grommet that goes on top here. Make sure not to lose this. Um, that part goes uh, second, so second, you part, you pop out the uh, the grommet. There is the uh, second step to that process. And um, so the uh, top heater pipe here, out of the head, goes into this part. This part is new. This new uh, hose, coolant hose, and that goes into. If I can get a better angle here, down to the uh, the uh, the right side here of the uh, the heater core. Um, I just reuse the hose clamps on here, just clean them off real nice, put a little bit of oil on there to make sure the gears uh, don't lock up or seize, and that's where that goes. The uh, other end of the uh, the water, uh, sorry, the heater core here, actually goes to the bottom part of the... Uh, water valve here, and that's this short bit of pipe here. I can actually get you a better view of it. Luckily, most of these parts come with the part number right on them. So if you should need to replace this, there's your part number right on there. Uh, very handy. Um, unfortunately, I don't have this part. <laughs> um, I have uh, pretty much all the other parts except for this one, this little short bit of hose. Again, that goes from the bottom of the water valve back down to the uh, 
the heater core right here. So that leaves one other rubber hose in this general section, uh, and that's this one. It goes up to the coolant reservoir. So this goes out of the coolant reservoir, down kind of snakes back up, and it meant it's uh, supposed to link back up with the uh, the top end here of this. And that's 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 all behind here. So that's why you have to pop out the uh, the valve here and uh, service it that way. So unfortunately, no way around that, but uh, luckily it's not too, bi uh, too big of a hassle. So again, I need to order this part to have it come in. But in the meantime, I'm going to replace this, this, this coolant reservoir. Um, again, there is a hose that goes to the, uh, to the valve here, and uh, there's another hose that goes all the way over to the radiator. That's going to come out too. And there is a, uh, a third hose down here at the bottom, and this is old, but this is meant to go down to the bottom plastic pipe um, coming out of the engine. So, yeah, next step, remove and replace this uh, coolant reservoir and all the associated hoses on that. So, uh, funny story, as it turns out, I've had this short piece of, uh, hose the whole time. <laughs> so, uh, this is the short piece of hose that uh, connects to the, uh, the heater valve here at the, uh, at the bottom and, uh, down into, uh, the, uh, system there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and install this and, uh, finish reinstalling the, uh, the valve as well. Okay, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for all the coolant system servicing beneath that intake manifold. That included the, uh, the two plastic pipes, the upper plastic pipe and lower plastic pipe, and also all the uh, rubber coolant hoses going to uh, the water valve and the heater core, also the uh, coolant reservoir. So uh, I think that's pretty much done for that section of the car. It's time to move to the front of the car, take care of the... Uh, the radiator, the upper radiator hose, the lower radiator hose, uh, the belts, the thermostat, and also the uh, water pump. Uh, this is actually the uh, the old water pump. I already took it off. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, replacing this one 
with a nice uh, heavy-duty Stuart Racing water pump, so I'm really looking forward to that. I also got some unboxing videos in the future of that Mishimoto radiator, all aluminum radiator that's going into the Z3. And uh, also going to have an interesting video about uh, replacement pulleys for the water pump. You can go with a heavy-duty uh, pulley to go to complement your water pump. But anyway, that's for, uh, that's for later. I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you learned something. I know I sure did. We'll see you down the road.